Hi everybody, this is Pam Coley and right now I'm going to be working on a new challenge. This is challenge number 14 and again this is a winning challenge in my recent um, contest for challenges and questions for the Watch Learn Grow Library. And this uh, challenge was submitted by Lisbeth Lingas of Norway. So thank you Lisbeth. So we're both working on this challenge simultaneously and I'm getting a little bit of a late start here but I, I wanted to show you that what I have here is a multimedia art board and this is a surface you can see it's very flat and somewhat flexible but it's great for people who want to work in any medium because it's a multimedia art board so acrylic, watercolor, oil and cold wax, you don't need to gesso it first. It does have a very interesting surface and if you're ever going to you know present it then if you have oil and cold wax medium you're going to want to mount this or frame it behind glass but I thought that it's one of the um, I have it and it's a rectangle and because we're doing a landscape we're working from the same photo and this is her photo but my printer is uh, malfunctioning right now so you can see that the colors are already like abstracted like uh, I'm not going to use these colors but uh, the, the blue ink in my printer just isn't working so the grass is supposed to be this beautiful bright green but um, anyways it's okay because really it doesn't really matter to me what the actual colors look like in the photograph because I'm already going to diverge away from that anyway so in some ways maybe not seeing that green there which is my favorite color uh, it's a good thing. It's not that I you know, don't want green grass, it's just that I'm trying to show how I would abstract something. So for me, abstraction means you know, I'm going to take some things from the photo, but then I'm going to use my own creativity to make it something that the photograph is not. I have some G gel and cold wax medium here. It's been stored in my tin and I'm going to be using that. So I'm going to add a little bit of that to my palette here. As far as my palette goes, I had some leftover paint and I wanted to use a limited palette and I'm probably going to be doing several different uh, landscapes off this photograph. So in some ways it doesn't really matter what color I start with because I envision doing several <laughs> different landscapes off this one photo. So here's a gray that I had left over. Here's a lighter gray. I'll just kind of put these on my palette. Here's my, let's see, here's another kind of a bluish gray. So right now the palette is looking pretty limited in terms of it's the complementary blue and orange. And I'll put this white on my palette. And what is, here's the orange. And this is a Masterson palette that I had stored the paint in and I do have kind of a dedicated refrigerator so um, freezer paper, the paint and then I had I have a lid that's kind of a custom made lid that my husband made for me which is really nice but that way the paint stay really nice and moist. Here's a lighter blue, a tint and I think this is purple. Let's see. No that's black. Okay sometimes the black looks like purple so I'll put that out. We'll use that at some point, maybe over here. And then I have this kind of a yellow ochre. I may or may not use that. I guess I'll just put it out anyways, just in case I need it. And even though it's a limited palette, but I consider since orange is red and yellow and yellow ochre is related to yellow, it's still a limited palette. It's just the yellow ochre has been mixed with other colors. <laughs> Okay, so I uh, got my mark making tools here just to kind of get, again, it's a smaller surface than I'm sometimes working on. And I just like to make some initial marks to loosen up and get a feel for the shape and feel of the format that I'm going to be working on. It's not that I really care if these marks are going to show. And I, I've already shown digitally how this photograph could be changed. So uh, given that I really do like geometry, I may just start to make some marks that are very linear.
doesn't really matter what I start out with here, but it's over here. I showed in the uh, digital play that I, I started out with here. I had trapezoids and I think parallelograms. I had a couple circles. So not everything has to be this crazy mark making that I usually like to do. Uh, some of it can be, but I like to vary things a lot. And so, because the landscape wants to be on this horizontal band, I might have just a line that's a little bit darker. And I like these angles. I already pointed out when I was talking about this in Photoshop that I like the fact that it had these diagonals to it. I mean, even if it didn't, you know, it's something that I can take advantage of. And here was the diagonal here. And then, you know, these mountains have a bit of diagonal, of course. And then the, the fence line, you can see that it is also at an angle. Just, it's not that I'm going to be copying the photo, but it's just kind of important to see that that's where I'm getting these ideas of angles and things like that. All right. I'm not going to do a lot of mark making here. I'm just going to kind of jump into the paint part and let's see what have I got here. So my palette knife, I'm going to put down, I think I'll start with a warm underpainting and clean this off. I kind of want a very diluted uh, bit of this nice, beautiful color here. Well, these are an orange. Grab my Messermeisters. Okay, there's one. There's another. So to begin with, let me just grab some of this and it's been, again, it's very, it's going to be thinner and it's not going to be quite as intense as it could be. And the multimedia artboard is a little different surface than the Arches oil paper. And again, you can see that just depending on how thickly you put this on, you can either, either make it very thin or you can make it a lot thicker. So right off the bat, I'm starting to get a feel for the different surface, my tools, opacity and transparency, diagonals. And it's just really kind of fun to move it around. And I find the Messermeister wonderful for so many different sizes. This is a kind of a medium size. It's not that big. But even on a small surface, it'd be fun to use a tool of this size because it automatically loosens you up. So let me just get kind of an even under layer here first. And then I can go back in with some thick and thin. Just kind of want to cover the whole white, get rid of that white. Notice my pencil line is, is blurring a little bit. I'll just show you a close-up of that, but I don't mind that at all. It's okay. And and again, I'm going to see how far I can get just working wet into wet. I'll come in again tomorrow and see where we're at, but might as well push this as far as I can. Maybe I'll work some collage material into this as well. I think I have some that has some monotype in it, which means it's just encaustic monotype is what I meant. Let's see what I have here. I should probably make some more papers, but for example, if I wanted to work in some, this is a encaustic monotype, very simple 
it's just black um, encaustic paint on rice paper, Tycozo. But it is kind of a, a beautiful piece here. And I think what I would do is just, I'm going to just tear some of this white border off of here. Maybe I'll cut it because it's not going to tear very well. But so I'm going to cut that off. It's thin enough that it works pretty well on the coal wax surface. I'm going to cut the white paper, the white border off first. And now if I tear it, I don't care if it tears, it can tear any which way that it wants to. I kind of wanted some strips here, but that way I don't have that white border to deal with. And Okay, so these are very irregular shapes. Where might I want some of this to go? And for now, you know, maybe I'll take my uh, silicone tool and add a little bit more of this to make sure that it's going to stay put. I'll put it down here for now. Make sure there's plenty on there. Now notice that the rice paper is going to pretty much disappear and all you're really going to see here is the black. And that's kind of what I like about using this uh, rice paper with wax on it because the paper disappears and it's as if you just have these marks on it. See, that's very cool. So paper disappears. And no, I did not treat the paper with PVA size because I don't mind if the paper actually uh, disappears over time due to the acid in the oils. That would be okay. So then I just have some black marks there. Maybe I'll tear this and add some more. I'm not really worried about, you know, what, what is the photograph um, right now. I'm just adding some elements here to get some things going. distracting when you're trying to focus. I'll just leave. I actually have a blown up equally bad printout of this gorgeous photograph. I apologize Elizabeth but my printer was not cooperating and I could not get grass to look green even though I tried to. I even put in a new cartridge and it still didn't work. Okay so now what? Um, I'm gonna mix up some of this blue. It's kind of a light blue. Just put it on here. It's kind of thick. I'll take some freezer paper. Move it around just a little bit. So when you're working wet into wet again, you know, we gotta be a little bit careful as to the types of techniques you do, because not everything's going to work terribly well if you're working wet into wet. But I do like this, this idea of monoprint and moving the paint around. <clears throat> and when you make a monoprint, obviously you're getting these really strange shapes, and I like strange shapes, as I've said before. So I don't really care at this point what I get. It just will help lead me along the way. Let's keep doing these mono prints. This paint was really thick over here, so I can keep dipping into it, overlapping the collage paper. That's getting thinner. Squish it down and then kind of pull it. It's a different kind of mark. Different kind of edge here. Right, 
Then I've got a silicone tool and I'll just kind of draw into this a little bit again, more of that mark making that I'd like to do. And it can be anything, but as I showed kind of in that Photoshop, um, the digital version of what, what you can do is, you know, lines can be made going through areas like that. Now I'm going to mix something here. Let's take some of that blue and add orange to it. It's kind of a beautiful color. It's a green, a greenish gray. So when I think about a landscape, obviously I'm thinking of a horizontal, but then, so maybe my, my idea, and I'm not really looking at the photo all the time, but I'm thinking, okay, what does a landscape make me feel? I definitely feel these horizontal bands, but I didn't want them to be all in the same plane, and I don't want them to really be on all the same thickness. And so what I might do is grab here's some newsprint. Let's tear it like this. Introduce some lines that don't necessarily correlate to one another. I think by putting the masking paper down like this, though, I'm able to work wet into wet a little bit more easily because I can get a shape, and even though it's the paint is still wet underneath, I'm already using the masking paper to help me deal with the fact that the paint is so wet. So let's see, I do that first, and then it just kind of runs off, but then you can play with opacity and transparency. Maybe I just do something like this. That's kind of like the fence posts. They're not fence posts, but it's kind of like where there might be a vineyard and it's you know, location-wise, not, not the best area in this painting because I think it's almost central. But if I peel this off and then put this down elsewhere, like maybe up here, and then put this one here, just down here, go off the edge. This is to press it down. Not much came off of that. Let's see what happens up here. Sometimes you don't get a lot of paint transfer. And multimedia artboard is, is a different kind of surface as well. 